Hey, I'm Pat, and in this video we'll go over functions in Lua for Roblox scripting. And we're just going to start off with a script inside the server script service. Uh, we're still stuck with these ugly icons, but I'm sure I'm probably going to replace them with maybe the old ones or find different ones, like a vanilla icons or something. So if you see my icons like change to something else, like, you know, don't be like intimidated that something is wrong with your studio or something I don't, I don't know what you would think but so what is a function a function is a way of uh, uh, kind of reserving a block of code so like you can kind of store a block of code inside of a function and anywhere inside of your script you can execute that block of code and you can give it values and the function will give you values back based on the values you give it or depending on how you write it. It depends, you know, but so that's kind of the idea behind a function. If that doesn't make sense, we'll go over it more in detail, obviously. So clearly the, the first word you're going to be putting is function and then kind of like a variable. Actually, no, the first word you're putting is not function. So the first word you're putting is local kind of like a variable you want it to be local it's good for memory usage and you don't really need a global function most of the time so very good to stay with local when you're using a normal script really and then after that you just put function so that way it knows it's a function not a variable and then after that what we do is we just put the name of the function very much like the variable so what we're gonna name this function is uh num num check so this is gonna be your first one we're just gonna name it num check and you can see we put parentheses and then after that we just hit enter and it'll automatically add an end and uh it'll automatically indent so you notice it indents like an if statement so this is a block of code that is only uh is restricted to this function only this function can control when this code is run so First thing I want to go over for this really is what these parentheses mean here. Uh, some people call these brackets. I'm never going to call them brackets. These are parentheses. So what is this? This is called the parameter list. Uh, the parameter list would go inside of these parentheses. So it's very much what it sounds like. It's literally just a list and it's actually pretty much just a list of variables. So Parameters are similar to variables like they can store data and the data can be set uh, when the function is called So we'll just uh, make two uh, parameters in our Parameter list called num1 and num2 and you can see we separate the parameters by using a comma and What it does is it'll take a one num it'll take two numbers and I'll store them in each according to the order that's given the numbers so the first number will be stored in num1 the second number will be stored in num2 the name doesn't actually matter all that matters is the order of the parameters and the data that the order of the data that it's the, the order that the data is in when it's provided to the function or whatever so what we're going to do in this state function is we're going to do an if statement and we're going to check to see if num1 is greater than num2. Very basic, right? And if it is, then what we're going to do is we're going to return true. And otherwise, we will return false. So, what does return do? So, basically with our functions, we can actually give data back to the point where we called the function. So we can give the function some data and the function can do whatever it wants with the data and then after it's done doing stuff with the data it'll give information back according to the data it's given usually is how a function would work right so what we'll do is we'll do uh make a function called if uh, i don't know what to really call it we'll just call it results for so what it'll be is it'll be the result of the function. And the way we call a function is you see all IFT auto fill for us like a variable name is it we just type the name of the function 
and then after we put the parentheses of the function. What this does is it will call the function, but in order for the function to do anything, we need to give it data. This isn't always necessarily the case. You can write a function without parameters, but right here, these parentheses here, when we're calling the function, we have these parentheses, this is called the argument list. So you provide the function with arguments and then it takes those arguments and it stores them inside of parameters, which can then be used inside of the function. See, these variables are variables or parameters are localized entirely within this function. They can only be used in here. We can't, you know, use num, uh, if I can spell plus equals one or something, it will say that num one isn't defined on non global, right? Because they're only able to be used inside this function, right? So now with num check, what we'll do is we'll pass it uh, numbers, two numbers, five and six. So five, since it's the first number, will be stored in the first parameter here in num one. Six, of course, is the second one, so it'll be stored in num two, the second parameter there. Now what we'll just do for now is we will print the result. And we'll go ahead and output, and if we test, you'll see it'll print out an output for us false, right? So that means that num1 is not greater than num2 based on our result here. And what we can actually do instead of returning a boolean is we can actually just return a string. So what we can do is print num1 is greater than num2, and otherwise we can print and one is not greater than, if I can spell it's not. And then once we print the result, it will actually give us uh, words, right? Because that's what we're returning is a string. And one, num1 one is not greater than num2. So you can see once we return in the function, we can take the data and we can store it inside a variable. Now what we can actually do is we can run this function without you know, storing the return in a variable. And then we can have actually a print inside of here instead of a return if we wanted to. But say, you know, if there's uh, a part in your code where you needed to do some kind of algorithm or you need to do some math or check something, you know, you'd call the function and then it would give you some data that you could continue to use inside your code. But in this way, this function isn't actually returning anything. We're just calling it to make it do something. And we're just making it print to the output based on uh, the two numbers that we give it. So now if we do this, you'll see we'll get the same thing. It's very much the same thing, right? So functions really are not that complicated. I wouldn't think they'd be too complicated. Right? I think the way I explained them should be in a pretty understandable way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to ask you to make your own code. You're going to make your own function and that function will be used to determine something uh, based off of two numbers that it's given. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you something real quick and then after that we'll I'll ask you to make a function. So, what I'm going to show you a uh, operator called uh, mod modulus. So this percentage sign is called mod, and it's actually a math uh, operator. So what it does is it'll divide the two numbers. So it'll do two divided by four, and then it doesn't actually get the result of dividing the two numbers, what it gives actually is the remainder. So uh, if we run this, uh, if I can stop having a stroke, all right. If, I, if we run this right, it will give us two because two divided by four gives us the remainder of two. Uh, if we do four divided by two, you'll see it gives us zero because Two can go into four two times and there'll be nothing left, so it'll be zero. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, of course, you know, you may not be able to figure this out immediately, but it's okay. You can take some time to think about it. So 
what I'm going to ask you to do is make a function that checks to see if the number it's given is even or if it's an odd number. So an even number would be, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. An odd number would be the alternative 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So those would all be odd numbers. The other ones would be even. And all we want is a function to check if that number is even or if it's odd. And use what you know my hint here obviously is you're going to be using this if you need another hint uh, I'll tell you in a few more seconds if you don't want a hint then you can pause the video here and try and figure it out for yourself for a little bit and then come back um, and now I'll tell you the hint I guess for the, the script so pretty much if you do for mod 2 obviously it gets 0 because 4 goes into 2 you know infinite times any even number would go would have two go into it as many times as it needs to but if we give it an odd number then it will actually give us something other than zero so 12 would give us zero four would give us zero if we're doing mod two right well if we do 11 it will give us a number that's not zero so you could you know maybe use a statement or something to check to see the result of that so that's the big hint really and now in a few more seconds I'll show you how I would uh, write code for this I guess and then you know maybe by now you know I'm sure you probably should have paused the video and you know tried to work it out on your own and make your own function but if you didn't that's alright I'll just go over how I would do it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check make a function called even check and we're gonna give it one parameter called num1. So there's many ways you could do this really, but I'm just gonna show you the way I do it. So what we will do is we'll start off with an if statement, preferably not in caps, obviously. Lua is very cap sensitive. Uh, I don't think I ever mentioned that, but I am now. So <laughs> capitals do actually matter when you're writing code in most any language. So what we'll do now is we'll check to see if num1 mod 2 equals 0. So if you remember from the last video, any math uh, operations will be done before it checks the condition. So it'll do this, and then it'll take the result of this math operation and check if it's 0. And if it is, then it'll do the code inside this if statement, obviously, right? So if num1 mod 2 is 0 then we can print uh, num1 is even because any number that can have 2 go into an infinite amount of times and give 0 as a remainder is an even number and then we can just put an else and inside this else we can print num1 is odd alright and then all we had to do is call it with the number so we'll give it seven and we'll see what we get in the output so we click run and num1 is odd which is true seven is an odd number so hopefully you have something similar to this maybe used a return which actually would kind of be a better way uh, a return would be a better way really uh, prints are kind of useless in this context but it doesn't really matter for this but hopefully you came up with something similar to this on your own if not you know that's okay but part of scripting is being able to uh, think of a problem and using the things that you've learned like if statements and functions and variables to solve that problem using code that's pretty much all programming is really is it's just taking the tools that you have and writing a bunch of words into uh, script and making stuff happen based on what you write in it that's really all it is that's all it comes down to so hopefully you could figure that out on your own you know again if that's if not that's okay i'm just kind of repeating myself like a idiot but you know it's okay <laughs> that's pretty much it for this video that's all i really want to go over uh 
We'll go over functions more in a future video, and these are very useful for more things in Studio than just this, obviously. But there's more things you can do with functions, and we'll go over that in a future video for sure. But that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.